So I do have a ton of stuff here. I have all of my products finally from the Sephora VIB sale that have arrived. Um, I do have a couple of MAC orders, a couple odds and ends from Ulta, and two other random orders that I have as well. But I will go ahead and put some timestamps down in the description box in case you wanted to see when what section ends and what one begins. So I'm going to start off with the products that I picked up from the Sephora VIB sale. Something a little boring, but it's absolutely essential for me. This is the Clinique Clarifying Lotion in the number two version. This is for the dry or combination skin. Um, it's just a toner. <laughs> I, I use this after I wash my face at night or cleanse my face, whatever I'm doing. I feel like I get one of these probably every other year, but this is what my Makeup Forever concealer currently looks like. I just cut it open today to get some product out of there. I probably have another week's worth, week and a half left in it, but I picked another one of them up. This is the Makeup Forever Full Cover Extreme Camouflage Concealer. I get the shade number three. I had shade number one in my bag that I was gonna purchase, but it just looked a little bit too yellow. This one actually looked a lot more pink than shade number one. So we went with shade number three this time around. If you're in the market for a super full coverage, conceals pretty much anything sort of concealer. This one is absolutely the best concealer I've ever tried in my entire life. Pretty much every concealer will kind of settle into the fine lines under my eyes. So I consider that creasing. So almost every concealer creases under my eyes that I've tried so far, but this one seems to crease the least out of all of them. It's a really nice concealer. Try it out next time you're in store. Um, I got one of these. This was interesting. I was this close to picking up another one of my Kat Von D tattoo liners in Trooper, but I heard a lot of buzz about this. This is the Clinique Pretty Easy Liquid Eyelining Pen. It's just the packaging here, and this is what it looks like. Um, I heard that this one is matte, and it has that same brush tip and that is what it looks like there. It's, you know, it's relatively black. It's a little swipe of it there. It's very smooth. I feel like the tip of this pen is essentially the same. I do have it, oh wait, no, I used my MAC fluid line today. Never mind, I didn't use this one today. I've been using this one for probably four or five days. This is pretty black, but I don't know if it's more matte than the Kat Von D one. I'm almost tempted to pick up a Kat Von D one and just go back and forth between the two, but I mean, I like this one. It goes on really nice. It's easy to do that little flick at the end of your liner. Generally, I will pick up one like really nice, luxurious lip product. This is the Burberry Liquid Lip Velvet. This is a bold and matte whipped lip cream. I got shade number nine, which is Fawn Rose. Here's the packaging here and the lip product. All right there, you can see it has that like checkered standard Burberry design along the top. This packaging, it's like this frosted looking container. It's so pretty. This is actually what I have on my lips. I do have a glare, or not a glare, I have a shadow because my tripod's right here and my window is directly behind it. So you might have a little glare, but um, I think it's super pretty. This definitely reminds me of the Bare Minerals Gen Nude Matte Liquid Lipsticks and the Julep It's Whipped liquid lipsticks, but it's a really beautiful color. I do have it on my lips, but I'll give you a little swatch. What the heck? It's definitely like a whipped, moussey formula. That is it there. I, I actually really do like this. I don't know. I might pick up one more of these, but I'm, I'm pretty set. And I didn't realize that this color would be so similar to the ones that I already have from Bare Minerals, but I don't mind it. I might go for something just a titch bit darker next time. Then I saw this cool little set from Bobbi Brown and I've always wanted to try her gel eyeliner. So this is the Bobbi Brown Bobbi Icons and it has a little, little mini of her gel liner, a little mini eyeliner brush and then I think it's a mascara in here. Let me show you how cute this set is. Here is the Bobbi Brown mascara, just a little travel size. I'm not gonna open that just because I have a gajillion mascaras that I need to work on, a gajillion that are open. So here's the little baby brush right here. Look how cute that is. 
This would be perfect for just putting in your purse or something. This is their Ultra Fine Eyeliner Brush. Look how cute this little gel eyeliner is. This is the perfect size for trying it out and getting a lot of use out of it, but being able to use it up without it drying out. So you do get, how much product do you get in here? You get 1.5 grams of liner in this little pot here. And this is her long wear gel eyeliner. So, I mean, that's a pretty nice size to try out, plus the brush and the mascara, I thought. So, I'm so excited to test this out. I'm gonna try and finish off my MAC Black Track Fluid Line first, and then I will try this one and see which one I like better, but I've heard so much buzz about this liner over the past, I don't know, two years or so. Oh, I grabbed one of these for my mother because I gave it to her as an early Mother's Day present. This is her favorite mascara that she uses. This is the Clinique Lash Power Mascara, and I got the shade number four, which is dark chocolate. Yeah, dark chocolate. If I can insert a photo, if I can find a photo of it, I'll just insert it off to the side up there, but it's a relatively natural looking mascara, and she gets the brown because she does have very blonde hair. So next one, I think I might, I might possibly be the very last person to order this item. <laughs> I really think that I'm that late to the game, but I've wanted this for a very long time, but I got one of these. I got one of the Kat Von D palettes here. And tell me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that this is the standard packaging. Did she change the packaging or am I crazy? Has it always looked like this? Has it always been raised and plastic? Regardless though, I think the packaging is gorgeous and I, I really like it, but I always thought it was cardboard for some reason, but I just got the Shade and Light Eye Palette and there is a glare coming in. I have used this one three times, once today and two other times. I really thought that there would be like a white or a champagne -y beige that would be more cool toned up along the top in one of these sections, but I was a little surprised that the lightest shades are this one and this one, and they're in the smaller sizes, but I don't know, um, I'll, I'll use them. I definitely thought that this had been hyped up a little bit more in my mind after seeing it everywhere. I do like it. I feel like I have a really nice eye look today, and I think this will be a great palette to kind of combine with some other ones and mix and match and stuff, but I think this was just so hyped up in my brain for so long that I thought it would just be magic on my eyes, and it's just a matte eyeshadow palette, so. <laughs> I saw this little set, and I've been wanting this eye cream for a while, and I just saw since it was in the set, it was the same price, I might as well just get the set. So I found this little set from Clinique, and it has the eye cream, an eyeliner, and a little mascara. This eye cream, I think it's a really nice eye cream. I had a sample in the past, I really enjoyed it. I thought that the full size would have a cooling tip, like a metal tip, but it doesn't. It just has a plastic tip. You can still kind of move it around and like, swirl around the eye cream under your eyes, but I think it would be much more effective if this had a metal tip on the end. It came with this quick liner for eyes, and generally I love these things, but this one is so dried out, I almost wanna send this set back and you know get a refund for it. Look at that, that is awful. Normally that is like pitch black, jet black. This is just crumbly, and this is so dried out, so dried out. Uh, but this is just an online exclusive set, so I don't want to send it back and then have to order another one online and You know these two products were essentially free with the eye cream So I'm, I might just toss that one and then it came with another one of the high-impact mascaras from Clinique And I have a ton of those hanging around. I have a ton of them set aside for a giveaway Which should be coming up soon just so you know I saw this 500 point perk. I really wanted to pick this up since I'm out of my Dr. Brandt Needles No More instant wrinkle smoothing cream serum stuff. Uh, so this was a 500 point perk. It comes with the Needles No More 3D Filler Mask, the Needles No More Wrinkle Smoothing Cream. That's the one that I was out of. And this sucker is like $90. I think it's $89 full price on the Dr. Brandt website and through Sephora. 
So <laughs> I just thought, you know, might as well score a little sample for free. I really like the pore dermabrasion from him and there's also the micro dermabrasion. So nice little set, I thought, for free. Ooh, let me move over to these really quick because these are cool. I've been wanting this for so long, you guys, and it's so expensive. I think it is 30 bucks around there. I'll put the correct price up there or in the description box, but this is the Lancome Bifacil Double Action Eye Makeup Remover. It's just that bi-phase, bi-layer makeup remover that you shake. This stuff works like a dream. I've had a couple samples, like the little mini freebie ones that they hand out at Sephora, and it works so well, but it's so expensive. This stuff is fantastic at taking off your eye makeup. Generally, I'll settle for the Sephora eye makeup remover, the waterproof one that's also a bi-layer, bi-phase one because it works really well and it's super cheap. But if I had that extra 20 bucks, I would totally buy this one because I feel like it just works that much better. I actually didn't purchase this. This was sent to me from Lancome through Octoly. They sent me that makeup remover along with the Lancome mascara. This is the Hypnos Drama shade Excessive Black 01. I'm not sure how many different Lancome mascaras there are, but this is some beautiful packaging. Now, normally I wear a Laura Mercier mascara, but I tried this on for the first time and I was quite impressed. I'll insert what it looked like on my lashes over there off to the side. This one separated. It gave me some really nice volume on my lashes and it wasn't too clumpy. I do have it on today. I like my lashes with a little extra clump sometimes, but this one I do have to use a lash comb for the most part to kind of just comb through and make sure that it's not too crazy. But I actually really like this. Um, you do have to use it a specific way. So the brush on here is kind of like an S curve. So I put the largest kind of dip portion towards my eye and I'll put a coat on and then you flip it so that the the little like bump thing right there is hitting against your lashes the second comb through and it really does add the volume on the first pass and then when you flip the wand and go back through it kind of like cleans out the clumps and separates them and makes them a little bit longer I feel like. This is a really nice mascara. I was, I was impressed. It does have a hefty price tag but I, I definitely have found that it is nice. I haven't ventured into the Lancome mascara world very much, but I might have to after this. So I'll let you guys know how this is doing after a couple months or something. You have no idea how excited I was about this makeup remover. This is probably one of my favorite makeup removers and it takes it off so incredibly fast. So if you've tried out any other Lancome mascaras, let me know, or if you've tried out this one, let me know how you like it, if it fans out your lashes and makes them really nice like mine did. Now this one, I have to be quiet because my daughter doesn't know that I got this for her, but her birthday is coming up in two weeks. And so I decided I would get this as a birthday present for her. This one is from Too Faced. This is the Natural Matte Eyeshadow Palette. So let me show you what the inside of this looks like. I might have to steal it once or twice after she's had it for a while, you know, try it out for myself. But that is what the inside of this little guy looks like. I'm not gonna do any swatches because it's not for me, but I did pick up a couple gifts during this VIB sale. So I'm pretty excited about giving her that one. I think it'll look really nice on her. And then, oh, I got this with some of my points. I spent another 100 points on this little guy. I tell you guys what, I've been wanting this Clinique Pep Star eye cream for the longest time. So this is just a little 100 point perk. Really nice, just standard, basic, hydrating eye cream that's okay to use if you have dry under eyes. And you know, like I said, these are just little teeny baby samples, but they really do work. They're, they're a really nice eye cream. I do like it a lot. This next one, I was so excited about this. I think this is just being released in May at Sephora and on the Kate Somerville websites. But this one is from Kate Somerville, and this is the SPF 50 Uncomplicated SPF. And this one is a soft focus makeup setting spray. So this has a SPF of 50, but it also sets your makeup. It has a super fine aerosol spray mist. And let me tell you what, when you spray this on, 
it like I go overboard with this because I feel like I'm not spraying enough because the mist is so fine with this. I have a clip of me applying that. I'll include it here in just a second. But this does have like a little ball in it when you shake it. It sounds like a spray can, but it just mixes it up. I would suggest mixing it up extremely well before you spray it because if you don't, you'll end up with like two or three little dots of the product on your skin. You don't get very many, but if you shake it up really well, you don't have that problem. And spray it for less time than you think that you need to because I sat there and I would spray it for like a good solid three or four seconds, but you only need to spray it like like do a Z on your face and you'll be completely covered, I promise. The scent on this reminds me of something. I cannot pinpoint what the fragrance in this is, but I know I've smelled it before. I just can't pinpoint it. It does have lavender in it, but I'm not smelling lavender. That's not what this fragrance is. I know that it's, this smells almost identical to something that I've tried in the past. So I'll go ahead and insert that clip of me spraying this on my face right now. This uncomplicated SPF delivers broad spectrum protection that can be applied throughout the day on top of your makeup without disrupting your makeup. It's a fine misting aerosol spray that dries down quickly and instantly to set your makeup, reduces shine, and provides a matte finish while delivering see-through broad spectrum SPF 50 sunscreen protection. It also has hyaluronic acid that provides lightweight hydration and also light diffusing silicone powders that blur and soften the appearance of your lines and wrinkles. I definitely feel like this product is genius. Genius. Not only is the aerosol spray part genius because it's a very fine mist as long as you shake it appropriately beforehand. I feel like it almost leaves this really nice dew and I've heard people talk about your makeup setting spray kind of like mold melding everything into your skin and like making your powder become one with your skin. I've never actually had that happen before except with this one. I can totally see it with this one. Uh, it, is, it does come with, you know, kind of a hefty price tag, but I would definitely purchase this in the future. This one was actually sent to me from Kate Somerville from the Octoly website, like I was talking about, but this one just became available at Sephora in May. So this is a pretty cool product. I'm actually really excited about this and I don't think it'll take me very long to move through it. It does have 3.4 fluid ounces and also it does have a click top like it locks. So you twist it to open it so you can spray and you twist it back to lock it back up. And it also comes with the cap. So if you're traveling, it'll be nice to travel. I would say this is pretty ingenious because you can wear on non-makeup days and just have the SPF 50 from this product, or you can just spray it over your makeup and not only set your makeup, leave a nice, you know, like, smooth finish, non-powdery finish to your face, but you also get the sunscreen benefits. So I think that's pretty awesome and this really helps me out because I don't remember to put sunscreen on every single day underneath my makeup. So definite, definite thumbs up for me. If you're in a Sephora, definitely smell this before you buy it though because it does have a really strong fragrance that I can't quite pinpoint. And then this last product, this one was also sent to me from Octoly and then I'll move on to my MAC order. But I know that Kenzo Parfums is a line that's sold at Sephora and this is the Kenzoki Sensual Bare Body Cream. And at first I was just like, oh, that sounds cool because it was like the steamed rice body lotion and I was like, oh yeah, 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 I'll try it out. So this is a super weighted, heavy packaging. Like this feels insanely weighted. This fragrance on here is very powdery. It's like a light, soft, very subtle scent but it's powdery. So if you're not into a powdery fragrance, I would say skip it. But this stuff dries so fast. This has the weirdest texture ever. You can actually feel it drying down. It's pretty cool. I really like it, but I wanted to read to you this one, this one part of what this says because it made me giggle and I thought, what the heck did I order? <laughs> so Kenzoki is a line of cosmetic products for the face and body built around three plants from Asia, the white lotus, ginger flower, and rice. Each one has its own effectiveness, scent, sensations and mood. Cream against skin, soft against warm, an unexpected flurry of creamy milky notes, a steam rice fragrance that rouses sensuality, plus a rich melting texture. 
Tantalized, titillated, the body soon surrenders to the pleasure of being nourished, moisturized, softened, scented, sanitized. Thanks to a cocktail of seductive ingredients, the skin becomes pure temptation for bodies to keep an eye on. Apply on bare skin with light, gentle movements. The cream glides on, pampers, and melts in. You define temptation, pure temptation. You've been warned. Like, what did I apply for here? Does that not sound slightly inappropriate? This is a G-rated channel, but... Anyway, I thought that was pretty interesting. I thought it was quite hilarious, their description on this product. So this is a really nice one. It does sink in really nice to the skin. It does leave a nice hydrated feeling for me. And I'm somebody that puts lotion on the body head to toe every day. If I can remember, you know, once in a while I'll forget. But for the most part, I'm constantly putting lotion on. I kind of put the brakes on and put myself on a no buy for lotions and body butters. So this is the last one that I'll be bringing in for a while, but this one's pretty cool. I definitely suggest that you guys check out this line and you can you can find them at Sephora or you can find them on their website too. So I thought that was pretty funny. Moving on, I did place an order for another deodorant. Is You guys might know that I've been using Piper Y deodorant for a while. It is a an activated charcoal aluminum free deodorant. I actually did a separate review on that product. I'll leave it down in the description box. I go through everything about that product, but they just recently came out with their stick version. So it says on here, natural aluminum free, gender neutral, es essential oil scent, and it's also for sensitive skin. Neutralizes odor without aluminum, parabens, or synthetic fragrances, no stains, no irritation, just clear, fresh pits naturally. So I will say that the fragrance on the stick is definitely not the same as what's in the little jars, the little tubs. And I'm almost out of my tub, my little jar of deodorant that I've been using now. And yeah, you do have to rub it in with your fingertips, but if you have clean underarms, I don't see what the problem is. But this is what the stick looks like. It's just kind of hard to get this softened up. So a trick that I like to use, it worked with the other one, I'm gonna try it a little bit more with this one is that I rub some lotion on my arms and rub it under my arm, a very thin layer, and then I'll apply the Piper Y deodorant. I don't know, I think I'm still partial to the the little jar that you have to rub, rub in with your fingertips, as weird as that sounds, but I just wanted to mention that I did finally order this little guy here. So I think it's been well over a year that I've been using Piper Y deodorants. And I would say, honestly, from my perspective so far, I would probably stick with the jar ones instead of the stick, but that's just my personal opinion. I know not everybody agrees. I did go into the Mac store and trade in six of my empty products with the Back to Mac program, and I exchanged it in for a lipstick, and I got the shade Really Me. I think I've talked about this on my channel before, but it's just kind of like a... It's like a purpley muted mauve kind of tone. It's kind of similar to what I'm wearing right now, but this one has less pink. That's what really me looks like. It's a really nice pretty nude and I think it came out last summer or last spring or something. It was a more recent matte lipstick that came out, but I, I really like it. So just wanted to mention that one, officially haul that one. Then I also picked up one of these because I finished this off in my last Project 20 pan. This is another one of the MAC Pro Longwear Concealers. I get shade NW15. I sure wish that they would make an NW10 in their Pro Longwear Concealer, but I like this stuff and I have actually been put back on the train of using this underneath my eyes. I go in phases where I like it underneath my eyes and then I'll wear it for a couple months and then I hate it underneath my eyes. But I'm back on the train of I'm liking this underneath the eye area again. So this is the product that they came out with that I did break my no buy for but it was just one thing and I've never broken my no buy in the past two years early for anything else so I thought it's not a big deal. And it was limited edition too and I really like these products but this is the Dazzle Shadow Quad. It's the Shining Hour. It came out of the Kabuki Magic Spring and Summer 2017 uh, little collection that they had come out. There was like four different collections from four different makeup artists or something but 
It has four of the Dazzle shadows you can see in here. I think one of them is a permanent shade, but the other three are limited edition, if I'm not mistaken. Obviously my favorite one is this guy right here that's kind of like their blue-brown pigment or like club, but it has all these little microfine shimmery particles. It reminds me of one of the, like the Chanel Illusion de Ombres in that kind of, you know, you see that shift from the green to the maroon purple sort of tone, but there's that one. There's that one that goes from like orange to pink. That yellow one's pretty much just yellow and like gold shimmery particles in it. And then there's a white one as well, but they're all super shimmery, really gorgeous. Uh, I'm really excited about them. I think they're absolutely beautiful to just dab on top of other you know, put something down that's matte on the eyes and then just dab these over the top. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. And I do have two, two other Dazzle shadows, but they're in the pot form. And they just had that 25% off sale recently. And so I picked up another brush. This is their 221. I did use this today. And these are super tapered at the top. I wanted to compare it to a 217 just for comparison's sake. So this one is the 221, and then this is the 217. So you can see how much fatter the 217 is. I love the 217 for blending, but you know, they're, they're completely different brushes. This one, the 221 is so nice to get into that crease and really make that outer corner area just perfectly blended and looking gorgeous. So I really do like both of these brushes, but this 221, I might have to go and pick up a backup of that. And then this is my very first times nine little palette thing here, but I did have to break down and pick one up, but I do have a reason why. So I've been obsessed with the MAC Pro shadow that was called um, Uninterrupted. I think that's what it was called. It was a pro shadow, it was called Uninterrupted, if I'm not mistaken. But they do have a similar shadow called Outre, Outre. There's like 10 different ways that you can pronounce it. And I saw that this little guy, I was initially told that this was a limited edition palette, but this is actually a permanent item. This is the Semi Sweet Times 9 eyeshadow palette. So this is Bamboo, and they actually discontinued that from the main line, as far as I know. And then this is that Outre, Outre shadow right there. This beautiful one right there, that one is Everyone's Darling, I believe. And then this one's really pretty as well, right there. That one is Pink Sienna. Super gorgeous palette. I'm actually really loving everything about this palette. I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of this one. I'm trying to show it to you without a bunch of a glare, but look at that outre, outre, whatever. It's like a mustard color. I've been wanting to pick up Bobbi Brown's Camel eyeshadow because that one is also very similar to Max Uninterrupted eyeshadow, but man, I wish they would just bring it back already. So that is Bamboo right there. That one is that outre, outre, whatever. And then that top one is that maroon, everyone's darling sort of color. So anyway, there were those. I'm pleasantly surprised with this. And the formula on this one feels identical to their, you know, regular eyeshadows. If you guys aren't a member of the Max Select program, sign up for it. It's free and you get free product. You get extra samples once you hit like a certain point. And every like your anniversary month, the month that you sign up for the Max Select program, you get a free product. So this year, last year it was a free eyeshadow, free full-size eyeshadow. This year it is the Patent Polish Lip Pencils. I'm so excited about this. I've been wanting to pick this up for so long, you guys. This was completely free. I got to pick out of like, I don't know, 20 of them or something. I was going back and forth between Patent Pink and Kittenish. And of course, I went with Kittenish. It is beautiful. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Such a fun product and I think these smell amazing. I think they smell almost identical to their, you know, the regular MAC lipsticks. Just a touch sweeter, maybe. But anyway, so happy to finally have this. I've been wanting it for so long, you guys have no idea. And then I saw that this was on their 40% off goodbyes section basically their clearance section. And I was like, ooh, I've been wanting a mint liner for the longest time. And I was gonna pick up the Stila one during the 
Ulta 21 Days of Beauty, but I passed up on it and I saw that MAC had these. These are the Dare Hue Brow Pencils and these are supposed to be able to be used in the brows for like a bright, fun brow color or you can actually use them as a liner. And this one, unfortunately, just doesn't cut the cake. This one was in Frisky Fresh and this barely shows up. So I'm probably gonna be returning this. This was only $10, but I'm probably gonna be returning this. It swatches just fine on my hand, but it will not show up for the life of me on my eye. So that was that frisky fresh. I'm so bummed because it's such a pretty color. Let me move on to a couple things from Nordstrom. It's super quick. So my Chanel Lucien d'Ombre dried out last year and some people were telling me to pick up this product. This is the Inglot Duraline and I finally got around to picking it up. So I ordered it off of the Nord Nordstrom website since I did have a gift card and I was impressed with how cheap this product is. So this is what it looks like here. It actually did not revive my Chanel Illusion d'Ombre, but that's okay. I can use this for a wide variety of other uses, so I'm really happy to have this. And because I did have that Nordstrom gift card, I kind of walked by the Chanel counter and I saw this and I kind of fell for it. I know that I had one dry out last year, but I am determined to use these puppies up before they dry out. I have one other one currently in my stash right now and I'm trying to work on that one this year and use it up just so I can use it while it's fresh and I don't have to race through it, you know, trying to use it up before it goes bad. So I picked up another one of the Chanel Lucien Ombres. And this one has been on my wish list for a little while now. This one is in shade number 97, which is New Moon. That is what New Moon looks like on the inside. Obviously, I've used it. I've used it two times since I've got it, but let me give you a little swatch. These just have the most intense, shimmery, sparkly bits running through them. This one's more of like a rosy, kind of bronzy pinky, shimmery, glittery, gorgeous mess on the eyes. It just looks very, very shimmery and it, it's beautiful to say the least. So that was the Chanel Lotion Ombre in 97, New Moon. And then one of the orders I did go online to make it and I got one of these. And this one, I've never heard of this much before. I don't know much about Clarins. But this is the Clarins Instant Light Lip Comfort and Oil. This is the Enhancing and Nourishing Formula. This one's in number 01 Honey. It was like one of the freebies or something from the website, I think. But it's just a little baby size and it's just a little dofa applicator. It doesn't provide any sort of color to the lips or anything, but it's really nourishing and nice on the lips. It's very hydrating, so I'm excited to use that one up. And then speaking of Clarins, I did have this one in the little box right here. This is the Clarins Instant Eye Reviver. It's supposed to target fine lines. This is what the product looks like here. And I've tried out similar items to this from First Aid Beauty has one that I just finished up last year and Clinique also has a product like this as well. You just put a little bit on, you know, underneath your eye area and normally the ones that I've tried before are tinted. This one is like a milky, you know, clear, well, translucent formula. As you can see right there, it doesn't provide any sort of color coverage. But let me read to you what this one says on the box because it's actually quite interesting and obviously I want to try this one out a little bit more and give my full opinions on it but I just wanted to you know throw that out there about this product and the benefits of it and what it's supposed to be used for in case you were curious about it. It says it smooths fine lines on the eye contour area. It instantly revives and brightens the eye area. It helps to minimize dark circles and puffiness. It has a cryo metal tip for a depuffing effect. You can use it morning and night, and it also contains Clarins exclusive anti-pollution complex. I did use this on my daughter this morning, and it did depuff her eyes quite a bit because she had really puffy eyes this morning. She didn't get much sleep, and it actually worked really well on her. I've only used this one twice, and 
you know, I haven't really seen much of a difference, but I need to do like a before and after photo. I need to definitely use this one when my eyes are super puffy and I'll get back to you. But this one was sent to me from Clarins through the Octoly website as well. I'll leave all the products that were sent to me down in the description box with the link for them. And then I did get this sent to me from Splendies. I wanted to show this to you guys really quick because I thought it was kind of cool actually. This actually equals out to be cheaper than going to Victoria's Secret, but Splendies is actually a website where you can go on and you can either get like a one month subscription like a month by month or you can get a three month six month or 12 month subscription and they actually send you out underwear which seems kind of crazy but you can actually customize it quite a bit and they carry sizes small medium large extra large in their regular Splendies line and then I think they have another line called let me look it up really quick for the 1x 2x and 3x sizes you can subscribe to this subscription called Volupties, which is kind of cool. So you have sizes from small to 3X. I definitely went with the smalls because that's just what I normally pick up, but you can actually customize this quite a bit. And I said I did not want any thongs. I don't generally wear a thong, and I don't know if that's too much information or not for my channel, but I like to have lace around the edges just so I don't have like lines showing through. But if you wanted all thongs, you could ask for that. If you wanted like one thong a month or something, you get three pairs. You can kind of customize it a little bit, or you can just ask for a surprise and they'll just send you whatever. So I thought they were pretty nice. I haven't washed them yet, so I haven't tried them on or anything, but this is the first pair. I thought these were super cute. Definitely would be something that I would wear. And these are extremely soft, much better quality than I thought that they would be. These actually feel on par or softer than the standard, you know, five for whatever at Victoria's Secret underwear. So. I actually really like these. I'm excited to get them washed and try them on. And then this is another pair. This is a little bit racier <laughs> pair, but they're super cute. They're kind of all like the cheeky style. That's normally what I would wear, but with the lace on the edges. So they said that like the lace along the edge is like a customizing option that you could go for. And then this is the last pair. I actually really like these ones too. I think the first ones are my favorite, but here is the last ones. So I'm going to toss these guys into the wash and see how they do, but that's pretty cool because if it's $13.99 for three pairs every month, I think the higher the subscription that you pay for, like if you pay for a six month subscription, it's going to be a little bit cheaper than if you do the month to month or if you get a year long subscription. But anyway, I thought these were really cute and I'm super excited to wear them. I think these ones are my favorite out of the bunch. I'll leave all the details down in the description box down there below. And if I can find any codes or anything, I'll also include that down there for you guys. Then I am going over to the last bag here from Ulta. I do have some odds and ends in here. So I did have a coupon for if I purchased anything in store or online, I could actually get this. So this is the Stila Stay All Day Liquid Lipstick. This one's actually in the shade Perla, which is a little bit lighter than Patina. And I like Patina for the fall time. This one's just a little bit lighter, like I mentioned. It kind of goes along with the theme of all the lip products that I've been showing. So that is Perla right there. This is the Batiste Dry Shampoo, and this one is the dark one. I had my roots showing for a little while before I had dyed my hair. And so I find that if you can find a dry shampoo that's either black or really dark brown, it kind of masks the roots just a little bit. I saw that Ulta had this. I wish I would have found this when Ulta had that 20% off coupon, but that's okay. This wasn't very expensive. I think this was like $7 or $9 or something. I have not yet used this, but this looks almost, almost identical to like the Veramona color switch. This is what it looks like here. And this part right here is for, I think it was for gels or it can be dampened to remove cream or wet shadows and liners from your brushes. So this part is just like a really rough sponge. You just run your eyeshadow brushes on it and it cleans off your eyeshadow brush. So if you're using purple in the crease and then you're like, oh crap, I need to use that for the champagne shade on the inner corner of my eye, you can just wipe off your brush and use the same brush 
and you don't have to get them wet and wash them and everything. So I am so excited to have one of these. Let me know if you've tried this out, by the way. And then if you saw my Ulta haul that I just posted, it's like two videos ago. In that one, I had picked up this It Cosmetics brush set and it was like a $58 set. Thank goodness I had gotten that 20% off discount on it. But the only reason why I had picked that up is because I wanted a really nice large fluffy powder brush that I could use all over the face. And then I saw on Octoly that they had this available from Real Techniques. And I've actually had this, you know, I've had my eye on this for a while now, but I just didn't bite the bullet with it. But since it was on Octoly, I decided to apply for it and I actually got approved for it. So I was so happy about it. This is actually the exact item that I was looking for when I had purchased that It Cosmetics set. So I might be taking that set back, that makeup brush set back, but I'll play around with this one a little bit more. I've been using this one a lot. I actually washed it last night. So super fluffy, really big. It's dense enough to apply powder, but it's not, you know, flimsy to where it's not depositing it, depositing it onto your skin. So on this one it says it's ideal for powders and mineral foundations. So I have actually been wearing my Bare Minerals, just the original powder foundation lately, and I've been loving how that's been looking. I've been using a flat top kabuki, but I'm gonna try using it with this, and if it works, I will let you know. I, I think I might do a get ready with me and show you how this one works. I'm so excited about this. If you guys have this, let me know how you like it too. I also picked up this other makeup brush. This one's from e.l.f. This is the Selfie Ready Foundation Blurring Brush. I don't know about these names. I actually did use this one today, but I used it for my contour and bronzer because you can squish it. It's squishy enough to where you can pinch it, and make it flat so you can, you know, contour right through there and then you can squish it back to its normal size and kind of just buff around along the, you know, the temple area around the perimeter of the face sort of thing. And then the last item that I have here is the Maybelline Dream Lumi Touch Highlighting Concealer. This one is in Radiant. And this one actually came from Walmart down in my hometown. Um, these were on clearance for $3.50. All of the shades were on clearance. So I really hope that these are not being discontinued out. I was worried that they were, so I did pick one up. But man, I hope they don't discontinue these. These are the closest thing that I found formula-wise to the YSL Touche Eclat, the gold clicky pen thing that you can use as a highlighting concealer underneath the eyes and like on the cheekbones and stuff. This is the closest thing formula wise that I've found. So I'm gonna keep this one in its package, not gonna open it up for a while. But anyway, that was everything. If you made it to this point, you guys, you're great because it was a really long video. I can see how long that I've been filming and it's gonna be a pain to edit this down. But if you guys have tried out any of these products, let me know how you like them or if you would like to see one of these products or a few of them in a future video, let me know that too. But I really appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.